Often when we are attempting to diagnose communications issues with a system, it can be difficult to determine where to start. Typical problems include broken or shorted communications wiring, defective or damaged communications chips, or ground loops caused by short circuits inside a control panel or multiple control panels. That can include a sensor power or signal wire shorting to earth ground. This problem finds the path of least resistance in the comm circuit by moving between units, potentially causing an issue with a unit halfway across your facility. When we have one unit that is causing an issue that knocks out communications between other units and the master panel, we typically call this a cascading comm failure. It is considered cascading when a problem on one or two specific units fails out multiple other units. Enter the ground test procedure. The first thing we do is check for panels with failed temp sensors. That could be sensors that fail at their minimum value, maximum value, or are simply reading way off from an anticipated value. The same theory applies for pressure transducers. We should focus on these units to look for electromagnetic noise on the communications network. If you don't have a target, we need to go through the units in your facility one by one to determine which one is causing the issues present. It's important to note that for this next step, even if you find a unit that has an initial reading, keep in mind that it's likely you may have more than one unit or sensor causing these issues to begin with. When you get to the panel you're testing, first we want to disconnect the communications connector in the panel. This will ensure that we are only reading from the panel itself without any bleed through from another unit. For this test, we're trying to determine if there's a short to earth ground in the panel or wiring. It is this short to ground that is bringing the interference from earth ground into the panel. We hook the first meter lead to an analog ground test point on the board. There are several, one of which is right next to the power connector on modern hardware. The other will reference earth ground. It's worth mentioning that there's also a digital ground on the board, but we do not use that for this test. With a meter on analog ground to earth ground, we want to be as close to zero volts DC as possible. There may be a bit of voltage, but anything over one or two volts is indicative of a potential problem. If you're reading closer to 24 volts, there is a serious issue causing shorted voltage to bleed into the communication circuit. Once you find a unit that has a voltage reading between analog ground and earth ground, we next need to look at all the analog sensors on the panel to determine where the detrimental voltage is coming from. We will leave our meter hooked up to analog ground and earth ground for the entirety of this next test. If you have a panel with no analog input expansion boards, as in a compressor panel or specific larger panels, the easiest thing you can do is take the two large 16 pin connectors out of the main board one at a time. Which connector being removed caused the voltage to drop? If the voltage did not drop in that panel, recheck that the comms cable is disconnected from the main board and that you do not have any analog expansion boards in the panel either. Once you determine the connector containing our culprit wire, it's time to plug just the bad connector back in. The voltage should read high once more. One by one, disconnect each cable until your voltage drops to zero again. Ideally, you will find the sensor that has gone bad relatively quickly. If it's not something you can fix right away, the channel will need to be disconnected to avoid the voltage that causes comm issues. Often this is a situation where it's helpful to have extra sensors on hand to replace faulting units when they arise. With excess voltage removed from your analog inputs, once again reference the analog ground to earth ground with the comms cable reconnected. This will ensure that you are not seeing bleed through from another panel in the facility. If the reading is still high, we will need to perform the very same test on other panels to determine where this voltage is coming from. You've successfully tested for ground voltage and removed any sensors that could be causing communication problems on your system. Should you remove all faulty sensors and are still experiencing communications issues, give us a call and we can offer customized support to determine exactly what's going wrong. For more helpful videos like this, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel.